Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another object competition video but before we get on today's competition guys we are going to check out the winner of the previous competition so that was the custom Hatable planet with backstory so looking at the results here it looks like Error XD took the win by what just by one vote here if I'm just looking at them here so he got four and then some of the other guys got two and three so this was quite a close one quite a divided one so yeah very nice um, indeed and yeah congrats to him for claiming another win so that now puts him as the all-time biggest winner of competitions if he's now the first ever four-time champion of object competitions he was joint three wins for quite a while but he's taken his fourth win now and he is yeah now the all-time uh top object competition guy on the channel so yeah very nice job um to him yeah he took the win with his bro meme world here so yeah, one of the halogen gases, and yeah, he made a whole planet around it with a really, really cool backstory. So if you want to go ahead and check uh, the backstories out for all these objects, much here, make sure to watch the previous episode. But yeah, that was the uh, winner. So congrats to him, four-time um, competition winner. But yeah, with that all said and done, guys, let's get on to today's competition. Okay, everyone, now on to today's competition, which is the Scorched Desert World. Um, so this should be this should be quite cool. We haven't really done a desert world or anything ever, so this should be. This should be interesting. So, right, let's open up the menu and see what you guys have uh, sent in. So, I believe we have six submissions today. So, a huge thank you to um, everybody for that. Right, let's see what we have got first. Right, here we go. So, comp, this is from Astronomy Geek. Right, let's see if he put any description for his. Let's see here. Okay, no, he didn't really put anything for us to uh, any extra information. Right, so here it is. Ooh, hello there. Look at that. Oh, yes. Right, so this is a Lombi or a Lombi have you want to say it here so look at that that is a that's a beauty i'm liking it right let's have a look underneath the clouds and um atmosphere so that's what it looks like underneath so we can see yet yeah, obviously desert very very scorched um i wonder if he has any colored water so you could you could sort of almost make the water look like a sort of lava sort of effect or a deserty yeah i like that i rate that that looks cool so uh putting obviously the clouds and atmosphere back on we got uh, obviously some nice orangey scorch like clouds and then a very sort of thick white atmosphere so it's almost like a venus in the making or something that's a cool sort, of, sort of interpretation i get from that which is really really nice so yeah nice job to astronomy geek for his object there good stuff indeed right moving on next up we have got core that's this is their desert planet so you see what they have made for us here right let's place it down okay so this one's going for more of the desert um desert looks so core said i oh, know you just put you just uploaded this file right so um here it is right so if we look underneath so that's what it looks like there. So obviously deserty, very rocky looking. Obviously a lot cooler in temperature than um, the orange one here. So there is their one. So yeah, desert planet. So just a full look around. So yeah, very, very rocky, sandy likes. So there we are. And obviously clouds, white clouds, white atmosphere. So yeah, very, very dry sort of world um, on that one there. Looking good. Right, moving on. Next up, we have got um, Lost 70244. Um, and their object here. So here we are. Let's go ahead and uh, place it in. A little smaller than the other two. Right. So yeah, this is called Donus. Right. So let's see if they said anything for theirs. Right. Um, where are we? Okay. So Donor or Donus, sorry, a former Earth-like terrestrial planet. It has been scorched for about 5.4 million years ago. Uh, once its star went into the first red giant stage. Okay. Um, it is currently a scorched desert. Uh, desert mixed with lakes of molten lava. Its temperature is a 600 degrees Celsius. Okay. So. There it is there. I think it actually says 700 there, but oh well, that works. So, yeah, as we can see, Scorched Desert. Basically, that very, very hot and glowy in the nighttime area as well there. Looking good. So what we'll do as well, we'll just make it a uh, little larger. So let's just double it up. There you go, which is a little more in line with the uh, other two there. So there it is. Looking good. The uh, object surface itself looks quite interesting as well. I wonder if he's used any of the moon textures to make that. It looks quite cool. Right, so yeah, there is Donus. Right, next up, we have got um, Loose In by a little Carly YT Hiss. This is what they have sent in. So let's go ahead and place it in. This one's going with a yellowish look to it. Oh, okay. Right, um, with temperatures soaring over 2,000 Celsius on one side, Loose In used to be a hassable blue-green world until its parent star expanded up into a giant, wiping every living species off its face. Once a thriving planet, then a burnt crisp. Right, so I'm guessing the super hot side is this area here so oh that's cool so they've done like a tightly locked sort of effect almost so yeah one side is scorched the other side obviously not very hatable anymore either but yeah very very hot surface face there going up to 2000 degrees so 
very very uh, spicy looking indeed so yeah there you go and also if we look at the object itself so it looks very very barren wasteland sort of look yeah not much going on all just scorched to death um obviously with some darker areas down here and i'll see the very very uh, hot face of the planet here so pretty crazy stuff indeed there i like it so yeah the entirely locked effect i think that's pretty cool so yeah there you go and also got a yellowish atmosphere with white clouds to uh, go with it as well so there is lucin very nice indeed right next up we have got uh, stuck in 2D's Cryo, uh, Crydonia, I think is how you say that. So this one, um, I believe, was actually meant for the previous competition, but he didn't send it in time, so he sent this one for today's competition instead. So let's see um, what we've got here. Okay, looking quite rocky underneath. So he sent a notepad file for this, quite a big quite a big notepad as well. So this is my submission for the competition, uh, Crydonia. Make sure the snow is turned off in the appearance tab. Okay, so we need to turn the snow off. Right, we don't want any of that. Okay, so that... Okay, that makes it look like that instead. Let's have a little look underneath. So there it is. Okay, so yeah, it does look fairly scorched, I'd say. It's got a bit of water, but who says it can't have water? I mean, it can still be hot with bits of water around. So, all right, there's a look underneath. But yeah, going on to his description, uh, make sure to check what it looks like underneath the cloud and atmosphere layers. Yes, we are already on that. Right, Crodonia is a super terror, roughly two times the mass of Earth, orbiting the star 1.3 times as massive as the sun, about 1.3 AU away. This planet has a rotational period of 1.71 days and an extreme um, axial inclination of 52 degrees. This planet is 6.12 billion years old and thus it's, start, it's starting to go into the red giant phase. Okay, so I'm seeing where the scorched part's coming from now. Temperatures have increased on the planet in the past 50 million years or so. Its average surface temperature is now 83.4 centigrade. Yeah, that's going to get quite um, quite hot and spicy there um, with a high of 91 centigrade. And if you, if you want it in Fahrenheit, um, 182 and then 196 um, with its highest. So pretty cool there. Right. There is there has been intense ero or extensive, I should say, erosion underneath the surface of the planet due to the softer, more soluble rocks um, beneath the surface forming huge networks of cave systems hundreds of kilometers long and several kilometers um, high in many places. In fact, an extremely deep um, zone in this planet um, it's home for 60% of its life because the surface is so inhospitable. Okay, so that's, yeah, the, the, the surface is scorched, it's hot, you can't live on it, so you have to live underground. So that's sort of a way around having a scorched planet. You can still have life on it if you live under the ground, it'd be cooler. So, yeah, very nice um, thinking there. Because of its odd underground cavern systems, the water moves on the uh, around on the surface according to the motions and currents within the caverns. Oh, yes, that is cool. Um, which um, insulated more from the extreme temperatures and... Thus came the seasons to be more delayed. Right. Extreme they may be. Um, in the wet season, the water pours out through openings in the cracks in the ground onto the hot surface, causing extremely strong s storms on the surface. In the dry season, almost all water seeps back underground. Right. So that's how the water can sort of be on the surface um, in its current form here. So if we just take a pause. Under there, you can see if we quickly... Um... Right, no, I don't want to turn that on. What am I doing? Right, let's just quickly rotate her around. So this is all the water coming up from the cave systems onto the main surface and obviously the main surface a little drier on this side but yeah a lot of water um behind it at the moment so it's almost like the face facing us is maybe the face that faces the star more often i don't think you said it's tidy locked or anything yet but all right let's continue uh reading right so where are we so um uh where is that well the rest evaporates off into the surface into the thick atmosphere okay so that's when it some of the water goes into the atmosphere some would go back underground when the water uh, goes away right uh, there is a large region that circles the equator known as the Funeral Plain by the inhabitants of the next planet outwards in this system. Uh, Crydonia itself has uh, two extreme conditions throughout its existence to develop its own intelligent life. That goes through two seasons in the narrowly short wet season. Roughly 70% of the planet's crustal water mass pours onto this region, creating great swamps, lakes and even oceans in just an Earth month or so. Um, as many storms are more powerful um, than the hurricanes. Oh, wow. -y. In the expansive dry season, the water seeks back underground, creating, um, as it does, hard outer shell. Ah, okay. Right, so the water seeks back underground, creating, as it does, a hard, compact outer shell of water soluble materials, such as salts, that prevent large amounts of water from evaporating. Um, out of the caverns into the atmosphere. At the peak of the dry season, their air temperatures can reach 200 centigrade, 392 Fahrenheit in many places, resulting in mass um, death of any organisms left in this region after the wet season, which um, segues into the next section about the life forms of this world. Right. Um, the life of this world mostly lives underground, as mentioned before, except in the wet season. The surface life is largely made of plants and microbes, 
Um, the plants use um, large yellow or light yellowish green. Uh, or the plants use light yellowish green because of the blue shifted light of the planet star compared to our own. Um, oily leaves that are made to withstand the extremely dry and hot conditions. No plants live on the funeral plane except in the wet season. Okay, so they'd all grow and then they'd be slaughtered when the season ends. Um, the um, aforementioned intelligent species from the next planet outwards in this system have made a few recon missions um, to this world to see if there's any resources worth setting up a permanent or semi-permanent outpost for... Uh, but all of these missions fail tragically due to the extreme conditions on Crydonia. It's almost like... Kind of, it does give me some Venus vibes. Um, but we're a little more friendly than Venus, because Venus is just permanently hot, isn't it? So, um, The species have since lost interest in this world, because from the data they are able to retrieve, the crust is mostly silicate-based rock, poor in most uh, transitional precious metals and organic compounds. However, they didn't realise it is that just below the surface, a huge abundance of um, Akali-like rich rock. I hope I'm saying that right. And huge amounts of living dead biomass organic material. It is likely this intelligent species will turn to the planet someday and set up colonies as well as possibly tame the wild climate on it. Could probably try and sneak some sort of terraform device or something. Oh, anyways, that was Crydonia. Thank you for reading. Very nice in job to um, him there. Awesome. That was good. So, yeah, uh, that was stuck in 2D's object. So, yeah, that, enough of me uh, keeping you guys on the same view of the planet. So, enough of a full look of it quickly before we move on. So there it is there. Right. Next up, we have got the last object here. So this is from Siren, I believe. So let's go ahead and place it in. Oh, yes. Look at this one. Right. So this is uh, Yularis. Hope I'm saying that right. Right. So did he put anything? Okay. A tightly locked world with clouds on the backside of the world. This scorched desert-like world has no known life or water on the surface. And the side which faces the star has lakes of lava. Oh, yes. Right. So... Let's see if we can find any of those lava lakes. But let's look underneath the atmosphere first. So it's quite similar to the first object we had at the other end of the list there. So here it is. As we can see, yep, the face that faces the star, obviously molten rock. So it's kind of using the tidally um, locked um, sort of feature like uh, Lucin was back here. But to less extent. So yeah, there it is there. This has got more orange glow. That one's more of a yellowish hot glow. But yeah, here it is. So um, we've got a flashlight as well. Have a little look behind. Why not? So, uh, flashlight, there it is. Yeah, so very, very scorched world. Obviously, no water at all here. So, there we go. Awesome, indeed. And then we want to go on um, directional. There we go. Good, good. Right, so let's go ahead and put the atmosphere back on there. And then we'll quickly go over them all once more. So, heading back to the very beginning here. So, a lombie here. This was Astronomy Geeks, if I remember right. Yeah, Astronomy Geeks. So, this was a lombie here. Looking, let's quickly close that. So, yeah, Long Beach, nice um, white atmosphere, orange, orange clouds. And, yeah, very scorched surface underneath as well. So, have a little look. So, there it is. There you go. Righty. Next up, we had Cores object here. So, this was Desert Planet. So, as we can see, this is more of a uh, normal desert. Um, I guess it's not as scorched as some of the other ones, as we can see. It's a little cooler in temperature. But still, a desert is a desert at the end of the day. So, yeah, there is their desert world. There you go. All right, moving on, we had um, Donus here. So, this was... Um, lost 70244 so yes, this is our first competition actually so uh, welcome to the parley hopefully i hope you enjoy it so um yeah here it is so yeah very very uh, hot and uh, spicy here as we can see lots of molten rock on the surface of his desert world here and then moving on we had um this was um little carly yt so yeah they're also their first competition so welcome to the party to you as well so here it is so obviously very very scorched on the tidy lock sort of face here and then if we look behind um we'll see a little cooler like sirens well down there as well and then moving on, we had Crydonia, the one with the big backstory. Because remember, this was originally meant for the previous competition. And yeah, luckily it fit the regulations for today's competition. So um, he didn't miss out after making all that. So yeah, nice job to him for that backstory. And yeah, very cool um, backstory for his world as well. So this is the world with the different seasons. The water appears on the surface from underground caves and then slowly uh, goes away again when the season changes. So yeah, nice backstory indeed. And then lastly, we had Siren's world here, Yularis, which is quite similar. It's kind of a mix between Lucin and then the one at the beginning because it's got the tidally locked sort of face making the hot lava and then um behind it's more of a desert like world as well so yeah pretty cool so it's sort of this one almost takes like a combination of lucin and then a, a lombie over here so yeah it's really cool so all the worlds are different in their own way but got their unique sort of features very nice indeed so yeah there is the full lineup guys so yeah if you enjoyed today's competition and want to take part in the voting make sure to join my discord server link in the description good luck to everyone for the competition as well i'm interested to see the results for this one indeed because i think this will be quite a difficult one i think there's some really cool designs here so a massive thank you um, to everybody 
again to send this in and yeah really cool so nice six objects we had today and it's a little different as well we haven't done a desert like world uh, before so i think maybe next time we should try like a snow like world or something maybe or a jungle world we could try something like that that could be quite cool but yeah, with that all said and done, go guys, a massive thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's competition for the Scorch Desert World competition. And yeah, guys, make sure you all stay safe out there. Have a great day. And again, if you want to vote, make sure to join my um, Discord server. Link in the description. And yeah, again, good luck to um, everyone as well. But yeah, with that all said and done, guys, stay safe. Have a great day, like I said. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.